Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night. It is the Earth Master out here about 9 p.m. here. Well, 8.54 p.m. California time, July 24th, 2024. Latest activity shows a 3.3 earthquake into the Southern California area just now, uh, just outside the Salton City area on the southern end of the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Southern California relatively has been quiet during this um, uptick in earthquake activity here recently um, everywhere else but Southern California. So now it looks like maybe things are starting to kick back up potentially. Got to watch that. So 3.5 coming in, a little smaller microquake prior to that as well. Um, there was another Texas earthquake out here, 4.0 coming in. The earthquakes are getting big out here. I think what's going on here is... Uh, we're at a, a standstill right now. Last time we've seen something similar to this type of event where it was fairly quiet out here across the western Pacific. Hawaii was squeezing, having volcanic activity. And inland here in the North American plate, things were quite active. Last time that happened, we've seen a, a couple, well, we've seen one eight-pointer up here across the Alaska area. So um, I'm kind of watching things here play out. I think we're going to see a larger event here take place very soon uh, in terms of uh, something big. So let's cover what we have for now. Hawaii, a lot of earthquake activity coming in here. In fact, uh, there's been a thousand earthquakes here in the last three days across this area of Kilauea Volcano. It has not erupted yet, but they did put out a uh, information statement here. That is not it. Let me find the most recent one. I guess we'll just go back to the site here. And we'll read it because uh, it's pretty important. They uh, they think uh, they well they may think what's going to happen here in a uh, series of uh, events. So let's go ahead and read this real quick here. Um, in total, there has been about a thousand earthquakes located in the Upper East Rift Zone of Kilauea over the past three days. Two hundred and fifty of those earthquakes exceeded the magnitude two, and the largest event was a three point six. Uh, these earthquakes have remained. About 1 to 3 kilometers, which is 0. 0.6 to 1.8 miles below the surface. Uh, the dike continues to grow and unrest may continue to wax and wane with changes to the input of magma into the area. An eruption is not imminent, but conditions could change. So, um, obviously, we're getting uh, some magma rolling around underneath the area. Uh, there's fluctuations also of that magma coming from the, um, the area below up to the upper east rift zone there's uh, a couple scenarios here so we got three from the usgs it is not possible to forecast an exact outcome of this uh, activity so uh you know this is what they're claiming the intrusion grows that's their first one magma continues to accumulate below the surface near the crater on kilauea's upper east rift zone um, as an intrusion similar to what we've seen uh, earlier this uh, this year. In this scenario, we would expect to see varying rates of ground deformation and earthquakes in the direction of the intrusion as it grows along with summit deflation. That's minimal. Uh, in Upper East Rift Zone, eruption occurs, which is what I'm leaning towards. Magma continues to accumulate below the surface uh, near the uh, crater here on Kilauea's Upper East Rift Zone, resulting in an eventual eruption. In this scenario, we would expect to see acceler accelerated rates of earthquakes along with increased rates of Kilauea summit deflation uh, and upper east, zone, upper east Rift Zone inflation before lava reaches the surface. Uh, the most likely area for that would be uh, between this crater here and a couple other uh, regions out there. I need to fresh up on, on these uh, pronunciations there for Hawaii. Uh, the, or the uh, third result here, the intrusion moves east. Magma continues to accumulate below the surface near the crater, eventually establishing a path to the east in Kilauea's Middle East Rift Zone, as occurred during Father's Day back in 2007. Uh, in this scenario, we, we would expect to see earthquake locations migrating east, followed by accelerating rates of summit and upper east rift zone deflationary ground deformation. So let's look at the, uh, the tilt meters here where we're getting all this earthquake activity at. Okay, right underneath this region here is where we're noticing... Oh, man, is it not going to work? Tilt meter, it should work. There we go. 
here in the last couple days, definitely a rise here in the inflation. Notice that green chart here indicating um, some inflationary, specifically around this area. We lost some up at the uh, the summit region, and for that we got to check out this area right here, this graph. Uh, notice that big drop, a huge drop there from the uh, Kilauea summit. That uh, is quite impressive. So we know magma is moving off towards the southeast from the summit area. We see it on the uh, inflation chart here with uh, this tilt meter. Things go up here in this area, as we, as I noted there. Um, there is a little bit of migrationary uh, earthquake activity, but it seems as though it's staying situated here directly in this area. And uh, that's where I think we're going to see some uh, eruptive fissure activity take place here soon. It's, uh, you know, no one can say exactly when it's going to happen, but uh, I think we'll see it here soon enough. Uh, check out this seismograph station here. We did have a pretty impressive event here earlier. I don't know why that keeps doing that. It's kind of a annoying there. But, uh, oh, goodness. I don't want really want to. Maybe I should probably zoom in, right? <laughs> it's so annoying. All right, we'll zoom in here to the seismograph station. There we go. So here's that pretty, fairly impressive event. We're talking about hundreds of earthquakes within a couple hours of time frame right there. That was earlier this morning, Hawaii time. Since then, things have calmed down compared to this event earlier. This is basically the third huge um, earthquake event that we've seen here in the last couple days. Now we're still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity, just not as clustered. But I guarantee you, man, there's just hundreds upon hundreds of earthquakes happening here uh, underneath this area. Um, we'll have to see what happens here. We just don't know for certain what's going to take place. There's a shot of the uh, area around the Upper East Rift Zone. Really no signs of uh, anything for now, but it's building. And, um, you know, eventually, eventually we're going to see a couple... Uh, some scenario take place here. This is put out today as well. Pretty quiet out there for now. We'll keep an eye on Hawaii. That's a lot of earthquake activity coming in. But uh, yeah, Missy Mimi's was uh, reminding me of this similar experience here, similar pattern back in 2021. I'm thinking it is when we had that eight pointer up here. Um. We have very minimal earthquake activity out here across the Western Pacific, and the earthquakes that are taking place are deep. Uh, one of the more deeper ones right there in Japan, 370 kilometers for that 4.3. Super deep earthquake here in the Tonga Trench, 400 and, uh, uh, 4 .8 at 535 kilometers deep there for that quake. So we're not getting any surface adjustment here. We're back building the strain, putting the squeeze out here on the big island in the Central Pacific. And uh, something's got to give out here. A little worried about this quake right here. Could be a sign that maybe the uh, might see something out here across the San Andreas Fault, but just never know. I don't. I'm not a fortune teller, and I don't have the magic crystal ball to uh, forecast that earthquake. But we look at patterns here, and um, this is very similar to what we see in 2021. What happened? Well, and a couple other events as well. When things get locked like this. <coughs> uh, Goodness, we normally see some type of large-scale adjustment take place out here, whether it's going to be across the uh, northern uh, Pacific area here or maybe a bigger quake out here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate. Let's see what else is going on there in California for now. Um, the San Andreas Fault, pretty quiet. This earthquake did not occur on the San Andreas Fault. It's at the southern end here of the San Jacinto Fault Zone, but just shy, right? Just a... Uh, a little few miles over here, a couple few miles to the east, you got the San Andreas Fault. And it is locked and it's loaded and it is ready for an 8.1 earthquake. Just a matter of time before we see that. <clears throat> Nothing going on here for the Pacific Northwest in terms of uh, earthquake activity. But let's double check the trimmer tonight. 31 epicenters here in the central area of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's not a big deal, not a big number. It's kind of odd, though, how it completely... Uh, died off here uh, and then of course we're getting this inland earthquake activity here where the stress is building uh, in the North American uh, plate here 
New Madrid seismic zone. One little earthquake this morning, a 2.4. Uh, and far as Alaska goes, yeah, we got a, a handful of earthquakes out here. Nothing big for now. But as I say, let's keep an eye on on the next few hours here. Things are getting tight. Look at all. Look at this deep activity here on pretty much the northwestern side and the southwestern side here of the Pacific Plate, with no subsequent adjustment going on here following those deep quakes. Watch this area pretty closely. South America, a handful of smaller quakes. Fours out there as well. Nothing big. Typical movement. A little odd earthquake way out here in eastern South America area. Um, out in Brazil. Don't normally see too much earthquake activity out here. But uh, on the globe, there is a 3.5 coming in there earlier this morning. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. The Mediterranean, some movement around Turkey. But uh, really no major adjustment going on there for now. All eyes out here on the Pacific Plate. Space weather activity, well, got some sea flare activity, but that's about it. In fact, the uh, threat level has dropped a little bit here to about 10% chance for an X flare. Uh, M flare at 60, C flare around 99% chance or so. Really nothing major uh, going on. Maybe a G1 class storm here in a couple days. I don't know, that G2 class storm they forecasted was a complete dud. But hey, you know, you can't. You can't accurately 100% forecast these space weather conditions. You know, it's like uh, it's, it, you can't do it. So we'll see what happens here as we get a little bit closer to the 27th time period there of July. Uh, a couple different sunspots out here that are currently facing the Earth. Uh, really, the only noteworthy one that I'm watching is this area right here on the eastern limb. But also, uh, it may look like this one's getting a little bit of development here. That's currently facing the Earth, but uh, we'll, we'll keep keep an eye on it for sure. Uh, but, but for now, nothing nothing major going on here on the Sun. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. I just have a you know that hunch that uh, we're going to see something big out here. It's playing out like I would expect it to play out if we're looking at some bigger activity. Deeper quakes here on the western Pacific Plate, squeezing in the middle. California is starting to show some activity, inland earthquake activity here on the North American plate. What's going to give? New Zealand down here, um, pretty quiet. Not a zip zero going on there, at least according to the EMSC. All right, folks, I'll be out here monitoring it for a little bit. Just want to get an early update in, uh, just in case something big happens out here. Have a good one.